All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to go ahead and uh, call this meeting to order. I'd like to welcome everyone that's with us today and want to welcome back Rick Young, who's with us today and going to be taking another oath. Are you ready for that? Sure. You sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look real excited. <laughs> <laughs> that is his excited. Is, okay. Well, we'll go ahead and begin with that. Again, thank you all for being with us today and taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, we'd like to go ahead and get uh, Rick Young up front to take the oath of office. Carmen, you want to join us or are you good? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> You're going to place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Rick Young. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the United States. The United States. And the Constitution and laws. And the Constitution and laws. Of North Carolina. North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As authority director. As authority director. So help me God. So help me God. All right. Congratulations. As part of that now, your monthly earnings come directly to the TVA. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh when you see it. <laughs> Mike, did you let me know that the bus for Paris Island leaves? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow the yellow footsteps and you will be fine. It's all right, Rick. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, welcome, Rick. Thank, Thank you for. Uh, your willingness to uh, serve with us again. We appreciate it all that you did for us last time and we look at part of our, of our board again. Thank you. Um, first order of business is the adoption of the agenda that you have before you. Um, everyone was emailed a copy of, of this uh, agenda. So if there's uh, any questions or no omission, we'll entertain that motion, please. So moved. Second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next order of business, the adoption of the minutes for April 25th, 2019 minutes. Any changes or issues? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. It's pretty straightforward. All, no discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. All right. All right, next order of business is item number five. Um, as you all know, we discussed the wayfinding and marker discussion last time. Um, the item was deferred for today's discussion. We have with us Anthony uh, Prince that's going to lead us into the discussion for today. I think he had sent out an email today talking Glenn about the, well. or Glenn did, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. about the two markers that have been produced as prototypes and temporarily installed. Uh, for viewing, I, I don't know if you've had time to look at them or not, but Anthony, I'll turn it over to you to lead us in the discussion. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Today is a milestone day. Actually, yesterday was a milestone day for the wayfinding program. We actually have prototypes in the ground. So for those of us who've been working on it for quite some time now, again, a milestone. And hopefully you've been able to take a look at them and, and feel positive about the way they are and, and of course, what, what they're accomplishing. Before we get to that, though, we will spend a little bit of time talking about wayfinding. I do want to continue our discussion from last time related to the Beirut Memorial Grove site markers. Okay, and If you remember our discussion from last month, we spent a lot of time kind of retracing our footsteps as to where we were several years ago with the initial concept and then concepts in the interim to the point of where we are today with the current design. So we're not gonna go over that again, we're not gonna re-plow that ground, but I do wanna just give a very quick overview of what the current design is for those who may not have been here last time and certainly for the folks watching at home. So as you recall, the, the site marker is intended to basically identify what the Beirut Memorial Grove is. Today we do not have that. Uh, the design that we currently have is what you might consider a monument style sign. Uh, it has a skeleton that's basically concrete block with a very deep foundation to provide it with support. Uh, it contains a brick veneer 
with a concrete cap on top that would either be white or gray in color. Uh, the lettering, the letters are 20 inches, I believe, in height, and that's of course because of the distance and the speed that's involved in this area. And uh, they would be raised steel with retroreflective powder coating on them. The retroreflectivity allows them to be seen at night even if the solar lighting, of course, which is shown on the concept there, was not available or not functioning. From time to time, the batteries do die and they have to be replaced. So from left to right, the monument is about, I believe it's six feet. I can't see the, the 4.2. Well, I'm talking about the height. I saw it's height, four yeah. point two. Four feet, four, two, four inches. inches. Four feet, two inches on the left-hand side. And it basically disappears into the berm as you head to 50 feet, as you mentioned, towards the right. Uh, the berm is not out there today. That is something that we would construct as part of this project. But again, the intent there is to provide notification of what the site is in a very stately uh, respectful as well as kind of a timeless manner. Concept would include two installations. As you recall, our first concept had two, the second concept had one, we are again back to two. And the intent here is to catch as many passers by as we possibly could. There are some approaches that we're just not going to be able to satisfy because they're too far away or they're separated from the site vertically. But the ones that we can capture are shown with the two positions here on the screen. The one kind of to the bottom of the screen is basically on the southbound, um, southbound 17 side of the bypass. So if you were leaving the bypass and heading towards Wilmington, you would have one that's catty corner to the road on basically what we call the, the lower lawn section. Again, it's a terrace site. So the one on the south is the lower lawn. The one on the, on the top is the upper lawn. Uh, the second location on the upper lawn uh, would allow folks from Wilmington Highway, what we call 17 Business, heading toward Marine Boulevard to, to acknowledge the site, as well as folks that come off of the bypass, the ramp that you see just there off the top left-hand corner of the, of the image, they would be able to see this sign as well. So again, we're not catching everybody, but we're trying to catch as many people as we possibly can. There are two different schools of thought on the <clears throat> design of the, the site markers from a planimetric viewpoint. So the design that we currently have, and it's a full package ready to be bid at any time, is for a curved face sign. The intent there was twofold. First was it provided an element of interest to the design. Uh, second of all, the curvature also allowed us to avoid some of the existing uh, Bay River Memorial trees. Now, both of these options here, either one you pick, straight or curve, some of the trees will have to be relocated. No trees are going to be completely displaced, but some will have to be re relocated, <coughs> more so with option two than with option one. The reason that we came up with option two was because of budget concerns. So anytime you build something on a curve, generally it's going to end up costing you more in material and labor. Uh, we consulted with our landscape architect. She really feels that it's six of one, half dozen of the other, uh, particularly because option two is not currently designed and we would have to invest some additional money in the design so that we could actually build it. So last time we were together, um, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of reluctance on the concept itself, meaning the type of sign, the locations of the sign. Most of our discussion revolved around what I'll call acknowledgement. <clears throat> Excuse me. The fact of whether we should acknowledge those who um, sacrificed their lives during the Beirut bombing or the fact that we should acknowledge those who contributed to construction and maintenance of the site. And we weren't really resolved on that, but the two things that we did agree upon at the last meeting was, we wanted 30 more days to think about the concept, okay? And we also wanted some options that showed us um, what I'll call acknowledgement positions, and we agreed upon three of them. And that's what's shown here on option one. 
Ironically enough, we have three options for the three acknowledgement positions too. So, uh, are there any questions before I jump into the options? Anthony, uh, first of all, I appreciate the presentation. It's sure. Very good. Um, my recommendation after the research that we talked about that we were going to do, mm -hmm. I think that I would suggest that we go with exactly what you have and leave out the medallions. Okay. And that, that's going to be my recommendation today. Um, I, having talked to some senior you know, military retirees and other folks, I think it would behoove us to keep it simple mm -hmm. and, um, and have it be what it is. And, and in this particular uh, uh, signage, not not include the do you know the donators and all the services. We just feel like it would take away from what what it actually is. And well, well, and you saved me a lot of effort there because ultimately that's what our recommendation is. Well, let me let me add to the chairman's. Uh, last month, I was probably the biggest proponent of, of pushing the medallions and things, but. <clears throat> You know, it's always nice to have time to reflect, time to talk to people, and time to uh, to have your thoughts. And I can I can tell you that in this particular case, simple is better. And I support what the chairman has has put forth. Uh, in retrospect, we probably shouldn't have even had the first discussion, but we did, and it's always good to have a discussion. But I'm backing away from my previous position, and I am in accord with the, uh, with the chairman. Thank you. Uh, how do y'all feel? I would agree with that as well. I'm always less is more. No, don't open up a can of worms. Brandon, that's fine. Well, I think the good thing is we went through a deliberate thought process. There were concerns when we talked about it last time, spent some time, came up with some other options, and then ultimately decided the original concept is what we should go with. So and the I only, really appreciate that the only concern that I do have is mm -hmm. to make sure that the 20 inch letters if we're going to spend any more money, I think, is in that, whether it's if we can get away with 22 or 24. Sure. And the reason for that is you got vehicles moving at a higher speed of rate. What you think is big here really shrinks up after you put it out there. And so if we do have some room and we do have some additional funding, I suggest going a little bit bigger on the letters, and I think you will be a lot happier in the long run, just from my sign, a little bit of sign experience <laughs> that I have. Just a little bit. Well, it just, things shrink up. And oh, I agree. It's going to be set back and vehicles are moving at a pretty fast rate. I think you'll get a bigger bang for your buck if you go... Um, a little bit bigger on the letters. In terms of straight or curved, I personally like the straight wall, but I'm not gonna beat anybody up on either either way. You know? Well, we'd certainly appreciate guidance on that too. So let's talk about that, because he'll need that to move forward. It's really, like I said before, six of one, half a dozen of the other. It will require some more trees to be displaced. On the straight wall. On the straight wall, okay. and we can accommodate that. And, the and and roughly, what do you think costs would increase on a curved wall? Five percent, three percent. All I can tell you is that the the walls, both walls, were well within our budget, okay. and I think the redesign was going to cost us around ten thousand, something like that, I mean, for I'm the okay straight side. One. It, you know, and so I, the. If, if you do that math, and she said they're basically a toss-up in cost, if you throw in the savings versus the extra design, $10,000 more so really construction, it's, it's not much. Okay. What do y'all like? I'm, I'm, I can go either way. I think we need to go with option one, just because Let's it's drug out it. so long. Yeah. I mean, it's drug okay out that. longer for a redesign, and you're talking about not saving money, just spending it in a just different way. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, that I'm, makes it a very appealing option. Like I said, we will have to go and talk to the city council about this, but um, once we get concurrence from them, we could bid it the next day. And, and no Bernie, more design. I don't have a problem. Both of them are nice. I, I notice option two appears to show more of the fence than the option one, but uh, but it's just such a big wall. Yeah. You know? So it really it's doesn't. So but I do agree with the lettering because it is uh, 45 to 55 going along there, and we 
need to make sure that those letters. A couple are inches make a world of difference. I'm certain I'm lettering. Because it's not just the height, you get a little bit more width too. And we will we will definitely calibrate that before we put it out to final to final bid. Uh, one of the things that we had toyed with is kind of printing up a mock version of this on paper Let's and sticking it out there, seeing what it looks like when you drive. I mean, it's kind of silly to, to say that, but it, it could you know allow us to make a better decision you know before we actually put money at putting it in the ground. I have a question. So the last time we discussed, I thought we did, perhaps having the uh, JTDA logo or the city of Jacksonville logo on it. Are we would, not we're, doing any Not doing that? Not on this. No, not on not this on one. Okay. All right. So are we going to go with option one? Everybody comfortable? I'll yeah, need a make a motion that we go with uh, option one. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Do you need direction on the directionals? Or are we good? Well, I was just going to spend a couple of minutes okay. going over. I've go got ahead. two slides here that basically show what they look like installed. Uh, two things to caveat here. One is um, this is a temporary installation. We did not want to go with a full-blown installation because that requires concrete foundation and a lot of effort. And, and the actual pole will be aluminum. Right. So the height of the sign is not where it will be when everything is all said and done. And then the, the pole itself will be a, a color-matched, powder-coated aluminum box pole. It's a lot to say. So it's basically a square pole that is color-matched to the gray on the sign. And so once it's all said and done, it's going to be, it's going to look really, really nice. Let me ask you a question. How long do you anticipate leaving that particular sign up? Well, um, I can answer that for this sign right here. There's really no time frame on the first one because it's in city right of way. Uh, this one here, because we didn't have approval from DOT to install it yet, we asked the county if we could put it on their property, and our commitment to them is no longer than 90 days. Okay, oh, because I would like to make a, a suggestion that we leave the, the first sign up until the Sturgeon City building gets so it can, uh, We have big plans later in June, and there's going to be a lot of people coming down that road, and I think yes. it would be nice for them to see that. Well, and this sign was actually intended to support the Sturgeon City project. And if we feel that this is an appropriate design, we'll just begin with the final installation. We have the pole available to us. It's just a matter of putting a foundation in the ground and, and securing well, it. And, I, and I'm just asking for my own benefit. Who yes, makes the determination of where the sign goes? Well, that, we haven't had that full thought process yet. Okay. We're still working on the concepts. Originally, we had feedback from AECOM, which was a firm that we hired years ago to, to provide guidance on the signs. Um, I would, they did great work, don't get me wrong, but I think that the scale of their recommendation is probably a little bit more than where we want to start. So we're going to have to calibrate on that as well. I think our intent is to begin kind of primarily in the downtown area and then on some of the major roadway corridors for some of our major destinations. So I'm assuming that you're going to have to get DOT's permission for the majority yes, of the location. Yes, sir. Is we will have to get a, DOT approval. Is that going to be a, do you foresee that as being a, an issue? We have Deanna. She's going to get it done for me. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no. It's almost done already. <laughs> I um, just to provide some clarification on the two different designs, the reason that we have to is because of the point that you just made. Some of them we're going to have to get DOT approval on, others we are not. So in the downtown area, the sign like this, it's in our right of way. We don't have to follow their guidelines. We can be a little bit more creative in the way that we approach wayfinding, okay? When you move to DOT rights of way, they have very strict rules as to how big the sign can be or should be I should say the lettering size the arrows so it basically puts us into a configuration like this on all DOT rights of way and again we don't have final approval from them yet and that's why you can see that this sign is mounted further from the roadway than we would like it 
But again, we just wanted to get something in the air quickly to get a proof of concept and finalize our designs and get with DOT on the permit. They look good. Mm -hmm. They do look good. If, if you get an opportunity, and everyone I've talked to so far, I've mentioned this to them, if you get an opportunity, get out of your car and go walk up to one and touch it. It's um, each one Will of them. I get excited when I touch it. <laughs> <laughs> they are magic, I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> it took a lot of magic to put them in the ground, <laughs> to get them here and put them in the ground. But they are very substantial signs. Each one of those weighs about 100 pounds. Uh, so the durability is good, the quality is good, the appearance is good. Um, this is something that's taken us a good long while to get to, but I think the, We're here. the end product you know, demonstrates the amount of effort that we put into it. Do you need any direction from us? If there are any reservations, no. if there's support for the signs, then... Are we... Uh, are we... Uh, do you need a motion or just consensus? Or? Uh, consensus, I would say mm -hmm. consensus. Any issues? Yeah, just uh, go ahead. The signs are different. They look different. Mm -hmm. are, are you giving us two different options? Um, no, sir. The intent is, um, like I mentioned, the DOT rules basically stipulate that this sign has to look this way and their rights are there. Okay. So on your we, major thoroughfares, they all look On the major thoroughfares, so we will have roads. this one. It'll be the other version. Right. Yeah, if we're just, just in, yeah, they, I see the little curve. Well, there's no curve in that side. But on the other side, at the top, you see a little, has a little, arch. Has a little arch and everything. I'm just saying, I thought it was maybe different, and these are different options uh, that we get to select from. Or Well, we don't get to select this one. This we, one. There are things that, I mean, if there are visual preference <coughs> changes that you would like to make, so we certainly you, could consider that. The top of, you would like the top of the other one to have a similar top. I, I like, to I, I wish they could uniform. be the same, uniform, some uniform or John, uniform. I see word consistency. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be hard. <laughs> it would be hard to do to include a top oh, no, sir. the same no, way. No. I kind of feel the same way. I don't really like the way the logo just kind of I like disappears. Well, one of the things, I, I share your, your feeling there, and if you look at the, the scale of the seal on this one versus the scale of the seal on yeah. that one, I think the top hat approach, or whatever you want to call it, gives us the ability to expand that seal, make it a little bit more prominent. It might be something to look at. Yeah, we can certainly do that. But keep it in the same format, just have that difference yes, a matching top. That way your seals all look the same. Would you like to see a modified prototype before we go forward? I don't or just drawing? I, yeah, I, I don't think we need, I don't need no. that. I think if you can make that I think happen. We can visualize, we can visualize it without a okay. prototype. Do we need a motion or is it consensus? I think you said consensus. Okay. We will provide, we'll need to get shop drawings anyway. So when we get those in hand, I'll provide those to the group. That should be fairly easy. Yes. Oh, yes. Anything else? Anthony, thank you so much. I mean, it was a great deal of work. And Special thanks to Glenn, too. He's the artistic stroke behind all of this. <laughs> well, part of the team. It, it takes a lot of work to get it right. Special thanks to Deanna as well. She arm wrestles with DOT for us. <laughs> <laughs> she must be winning a lot of matches. Yeah. <laughs> she does. She wins more than she loses. Well, thank you again. <laughs> Yes, sir. My pleasure. Okay. Um, next order of business is going to be the, um, or actually old business, item number six. And you all remember that we discussed the Vietnam Veterans Visitor Center. And based on your direction, we have uh, sent a letter, which is included in your packet, to the uh, foundation about the approval of the funding that we uh, voted on and the conditions that we also um uh, put upon it and so if there's no questions or any concerns about that we don't need any motions or anything it's just uh, FYI any questions about that it's basically a reflection of what we uh, all agreed to uh, do Glenn do we need any action on that? nope it was provided so that all of you got the same message thank you very much 
All right, item number seven, uh, the strategic work and the spending plan, um, which is uh, located on page 19. Uh, each year we adopt a budget that contains uh, a broad distribution of funding that we allocate. Uh, Glenn, please. Obviously, um, we're going to ask for your guidance on this. This is your money to spend. And what we have done is, is that after you adopted the strategic initiative um, plan that we, that we presented to you at the last meeting, we formed this to accomplish that plan as much as we possibly could. And so consequently, this is the work that, that is um, the plan of work for the new fiscal year that we wish to proceed with. Now, just to give a moment of um, reflection, you remember you actually adopt a budget in an ordinance uh, type format um, that um, just sets this up and says we collect this much and we get this administrative fee and then we take what's left and divide it by one third and two thirds and um, promotion money, P, per, is pink money and uh, that we send on, on things that are um, green in nature and big buildings and stuff or whatever, and that's the green money there. So that's where that works. So this is the actual adopted budget for FY20, and you saw it made some changes there as it was. So now we're going to start talking about the spending plan, um, which is not a budget, but gives us guidance as to how we spend matters as it is. So what we're proposing, um, we have some reserve. If you recall, when we switched over to the new system, um, it was about 1.3 million that was in there um, that was a part of a reserve. We have never used all of the amount of money that we had proposed to take from the reserve. So um, it's it's down to around 900,000 in round numbers, correct, Gail? Okay, so right now, as it is in that reserve, because remember, once that money comes in, is designated as pink money, it stays with that designation of pink money and cannot change over to the green side at that point. So we do wanted to be sure that we're quite aware that, that diminishing balance is there <coughs> and that we are um, trying to adjust for that over time. So you'll see some things in there which we were to give high priority to the strategic initiatives our partner support, and what the authority has told us that you wish to see done during that time. Toward the end of that, um, we took the Bridal Expo that previously was funded out of the Tourism Promotion Fund and moved it over to the um, Strategic Initiative Fund. We believe that much like the reunion project that proposes for room nights that are, you recruit now for room nights that are going to come into the future, sometimes multiple years into the future, um, the, the Bridal Expo is like that too. And I think our testimony from our friends who actually collect the occupancy tax has generally been that um, they have seen the result of the Bridal Expo and the business that gets booked during that time as it was. So there is no real immediate overnight stays like there is with the Tourism Promotion Fund. So evaluating their performance based on overnight stays from that single event was kind of a, a, a workshop in looking to the future. Now, we did create for the Tourism Promotion Fund for this year four categories. They are the overnight stays that are obvious of, as a result of TDA funding. That is to say that if the TDA funding goes away, this project would likely not get um, garner the overnight stays that it currently does. Real, like we said, the easies. Number two, incubation continues. There are still works in progress attached to the project. There are some overnight stays produced. And then community benefit. We really learned about this from a lot of our friends and other uh, other communities that do this work in which you feel an obligation to fund or that there's been some historical funding to it and those that produce overnight stays and then those that are low overnight stays that don't produce a lot of uh, you know overnight stays immediate but have some promotional value and you'll see some examples of this as it was so the production of overnight stays obvious result of TDA funding is the Grand Prix series because obviously the Marine Corps is not going to spend any money on promoting the the Grand Prix series off base since they can only advertise to patrons they're not going to advertise to off base sites as a result of it we did reduce that from the previous year which was a reduction from the past year then incubation continues and overnight stays are produced we put in this the alley temple charity balls that have a lot of overnight stays attached to them mind body and soul and power which has had a history of more overnight stays than what they have had most recently and they're in a rebuilding year they actually do not know if they're going to use this for fy20 but um, we are making this allowance for that we did make that change and then final touch models fashion week they have been 
largely limited by the amount of space that they can have. They have sold out spaces and done things. They can't get any more people into the space that they, that they, they operate in. Clearly, large community benefit that produces overnight stays is the Jamboree. No question about that. It produces overnight stays and has that largely from the athletic side. And Jamboree is a wonderful event that we all love and enjoy from that deal. And then those that are community benefits with some overnight stay potential. And a wonderful example of that has to be like Winterfest, in which we have we have just labored over ways to increase the overnight stays on that. And um, we get a lot of local attention on that. And, you know, we, we, we are doing things to try to make that happen. Oktoberfest, as you know, has added a, a baseball tournament to the end of it in cooperation with the Sports Commission to build some overnight stays. Jazz in the city, those guys sell those tickets. Um, you know, it, it, it happens as it is. And we get some overnight stays. They're not large. We've tried to, if they had a larger venue, we think they could sell them to their the people that they um, at, uh, asked to buy, buy the tickets plus some other people. But what happened is they tend to sell out because of the space limitation that's out there as it was. Art Block and Sturgeon City are both projects that we think have great promotional value. There could be overnight stays that are generated from these. An Art Block, those plein air painters, they produce some overnight stays. We're not talking huge numbers here at this time. So they just went into that space. So there are 10 events that are in the program, $100,000 worth of awards, which is down 23,000 from the previous year because we're not counting what the money was that was spent for the um, uh, expo because it's been moved to another area. Uh, we're keeping the reserve in there just in case you folks decide there is something we want to spend some more money on or do something there and we'll have that to be done. And the administration of the funds about 18.8, that, attends, that, that represents attending a lot of meetings and doing a lot of buys. Um, there's a lot of these um, that, that um, require a lot of hand-holding and, um, and, and that professional assistance is probably in some cases more valuable than the funds we spend on any sort of promotion. For other key expenses, we have those state and regional partnerships. I've heard loud and clear from leadership that they wish to continue um, you know, with our state partnerships. This is where <coughs> Visit NC, and we get some good things out of it, and we're going to show you some results of it. And then our partner support um, that we have that we, that we continue. And then we have for the visitor experience, based on information that I've received, we have put that, we have raised that funding. Um, we do not know, I mean, Anthony, I don't know what your budget is for that sign at Beirut. What now do you think that might be? It's less than 150000 for both of them. Okay. So I would say around one twenty. Okay. So we're, we'll, we're, that, we'll have to move some funds within our allocation of that. But, um, you know, we still have it in there and have the other signs for you, um, for you to consider at that time if that's what you wish to do. And then on the strategic initiative, the specific projects, I think all of us will agree that reunion project is, this books things in the future, but we've already had some reunions that have come here as a result of the project. But the, this is a seed for which you plant and then get the shade of that tree a little bit later. And so we, we, we will continue that. Sports development project has allowed them to expand at their staff and to um, basically, if you recall, at the last meeting as part of the strategic plan, they presented to you the Richmond model. Um, this moves them to be more self-reliant and also more uh, consistent and sustainable with what they're doing um, and do it in such a way that it doesn't jeopardize the projects that they already do that provides good um, return on investment. The docent project and the tour development make no changes. The business meeting development, this is one that we added mid-year. Um, this is um, cataloging all the meeting space within our community and having that available. Um, we just today approved the purchase order for some software that's going to actually allow, should, you know, Rick or um, you know Chris want to look from a hotel perspective that they're getting in somebody that's going to use a lot of rooms and they want to see meeting spaces and what, what dates they might be available, they'll be able to see that online and know what the kind of pricing might be for that as it was. And then the Arts Council development, um, I, I've heard loudly from the, um, from the authority members about wanting to make sure that there's something done to advance that. What this does is provide an art initiative project. Um, that could potentially produce some significant revenue for them in the model of some that's been done by communities around us. We won't reveal all of that, but just say that um, you need not look but about 47 miles north of us here. 
Um, so uh, it will be a signature income producing project and it will push arts outside of the gallery. Um, so that's one of the complaints the state has had about the Arts Council is that they, they tend to be a little um, look inward there and this will require them to get outside of that. Um, this, um, this is how we're going to implement this. Obviously, we need some expert um, you know, um, advice and counsel, and so DK Communications and Viamark provides that. Um, one of, you're going to see the fruits of those labors here um, in just a few moments, but um, we, we, as city staff, we, we can't do the things they do, and this is what, um, this, this basically acts as an extension of staff and invites that as it was. The thing you'll see most interesting is about these media invites and familiarization tours. Uh, they are producing results, and we are seeing the action of it. When Lance Ledoux tells you that he's overbooked on his bayonet cruises, um, you know, you, you get the message that something must be working as it was. We're continuing some spending on making sure that our website is responsive to what we're advertising and pushing. And again, we, as we mentioned, we have this software for the meeting space optimization um, so that we can have that and share that among more people as it was. And then the Sports Development Fund has been changed to $15,000 to give a little bump there. Um, he's not spent the whole money this year, so we're, we feel very comfortable about that. We are going to keep $5,000 as a special events reserve, and advertising and branding has been reduced by $20,000 as a result of our cuts. Now the green money, the thing a lot of people get excited about. Um, you, of course, set aside $150,000 every year for the Sturgeon City debt obligation. Um, the number 100,000 was mentioned in the visitor center, um, but obviously it is, will be your choice to see how the, you know, the conditions are met as whether you go forward with that and what number you do, but we just put that in just so we have it. Um, and many of you know the city has acquired the land um, that was for, formerly known as the Handy Mart there at the intersection of Old Bridge and um, Marine Boulevard, and consequently um, you might choose to participate in some action on there. You had allocated funding previously to the Heroes Visitor Center that was going to be at the landing and so you know that might well be transferred to this project or do something else. Um, the chairman has mentioned in the past some desire to help with some sort of land acquisition or do something to that effect and there might be other projects that you wish to have so that leaves 382 out of current year allocation um, and of course we did not spend all the green money from the previous year either so you have some accumulation of that. Excuse me, let me ask a question. On that particular slide and, and the information we're, we're looking at here, uh, there's a $250,000 line item that says two, it's been allocated. Land acquisition allocated? No, 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 no. That's the, that's the hundred and fifty plus the hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And I probably shouldn't have put the hundred thousand dollars in it, but anyway, we <coughs> My error with the magic formula is that Excel lets you make mistakes quickly. Um, so back on this again, this is it, it, it respects this number that you see here and does not exceed that number. And we await any commentary you wish to have or instructions or questions that you have. Thank you, Glenn. <clears throat> I have a question. Okay. So am I am I to assume that in the bank for capital projects unallocated? We have 382,000 from this year. Just this year. Not well, actually, and yeah, I'm making sure I say this right, that's for your future year. You won't have collected this tax until July 1st. Now, we because we have some fund balance, we're able to pay for things from because we haven't spent all the money out of the previous year um, in there. Well, where does that show up, the fund balance? That'll be when you see your audit and what Ms. Bates may say to you. All right. So we have more than 382. Yes, sir. Thank you. And so there was a, a minor discrepancy on this number right now. So the, the print was probably the accurate. There was a number different. But yes, the print, I, the print I, as I there. said, I made an error in Excel formula. Okay. <laughs> that I did not catch. Any other questions? If there are no questions, uh, directors, I will need a uh, motion to uh, adopt the plan as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you, Glenn. Thank, Thank you. Uh, great work. And now you get to see what your money pays for. Mm -hmm. Teresa. <laughs> no, Kim. Oh, oh Kim. Kim, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the other staff. The other staff. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, so I think the last time we met, um, Caesar and I were leaving a little early to start our familiarization tour, our April tour. Um, we had a good group of people to join us. We had Scott Mason from WRAL. He's a Tar Heel traveler. We had Kathy and Fletcher Newborn, who are a husband and wife travel duo. They actually do some international fam tours. They had just gotten back from one when they joined us, and they are contributing writers for AAA. We have Kate Kelly, who's a blogger. She does Life of a Ginger. Cece Moreno's a blogger with Food Diary of a City Girl. And then we had another couple who wanted to join us for our spring um, tour, but because of scheduling issues, we brought them in Mother's Day weekend, and they had a little tag along with them. That's their two-year-old kid at Mike's Farm, actually. Um, so some of the places we toured them, of course, was the Freedom Fountain. We took them to the gardens. Um, they got to set sail. They had a sunset cruise on the bayonet. They got to experience the Friday Earth Day event, which was really awesome and crowded and full of joyful kids. Paula and Pat were available for the Sturgeon City story and the story of how the river was cleaned up and is now teeming with life and a great place for water recreation. We had a windy day in Swansboro. Unfortunately, yes, we did. <laughs> We're going all around. It was very windy. Um, we took them to Hammocks Beach State Park, the visitor center, um, their, what's it called, their ferry, and the Bear Island is not yet open, still recovering from Hurricane Florence. Hopefully that will open July. July 4th is the shoot date. So we'll At Hammocks Beach. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. um, but we had Donna there to share with us her wisdom of the area. We toured them through downtown Swansboro, and they had some really good food. And then we took them to a couple of sites out in the county locations. We took them to Mike's farm. They got to hear Teresa's story of how the farm began, grew, and is still growing to this day. And they went to Walton's Distillery and got the tour there and were able to sample some flavored moonshine. So while they were here, they actually did a really good job of giving us some social media posts of all the exciting things that they were doing and seeing. Everyone seemed really engaged and interested. Um, this one particular post from CC, the food over the bayonet, and just that one post was viewed by 15 or 15,000 people. So we had some really good numbers there. Do you wanna? Oh no, it's a, one thing about, you know, with social, you can at least get some numbers back pretty fast. Immediately. You're, you're, you're gonna know <laughs> what you're doing, what's, what's doing. And let's think about it, you know, 15, almost 15,500 15, people. That's, that's a pretty significant investment, you know. I mean, that, that's a good return for what we have spent here on the map. And she keeps doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're continuing the post. They continue to reshare and get more eyes on those posts. Everyone was really excited, actually, to participate, or not to participate, but to see the mud, sweat, and tears race in action. Everyone was really impressed with the ages of folks that were participating. So we got some more race photos and a spider from Earth Day. So some of the results that came out of it, CC Food Diary with City Girl, she actually did a really great post that um, mentioned a couple of the restaurants that we went to. She's very much a foodie, so she was excited about some of the food places we took her to. And C Tripping, I think, did a really, provided us a really good itinerary um, for folks who want to come and spend just a weekend in the city. Particularly with children. They were, uh, you know, very sensitive to what you could do with young children. And that was, um, that was an interesting perspective to take them around for. And then we had several inspired posts um, for Memorial Day weekend. A lot of the folks who joined us for our fam tour, they were posting about the gardens being a great place to visit. One of the best media results we got out of this was Tar Heel Traveler Scott Mason. He did, he came back a couple of weeks later and did a story on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. And he also got Sturgeon City while he was here, but I think we're gonna show you the video for those who missed it of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. 
almost Memorial Day, and this week our Tar Heel Traveler is paying tribute to veterans. Tonight we find him in Onslow County near Camp Lejeune. Scott Mason takes us to the magnificent Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Jacksonville. Quiet, almost serene place. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Jacksonville. Does it attract visitors from around the country? Around the world. And they all say the same thing, that it affects them emotionally. All is well. The dome here is the symbol of tranquility. It sort of ties the, the circle together, the circle of, I know it's not the circle of life, but it's the circle of veterans, you know, that, that died in Vietnam. It is the second largest Vietnam veterans memorial in the nation, second only to the one in Washington, D.C. The vision was not to forget. And to remember the names of those who never came home, all 58,000 of them. And what few people know is every year they add names to the wall of people that have wounded in Vietnam and died from those related injuries. All these years later. Pass on as a result of those war wounds. The names. The name in front of me is a, a 19-year-old machine gunner from Vietnam named Norris Brendan. Norris was due back in the States in like 10 days. 1968. We had no idea what we were going into. So they said to Brendan, you can stay. Stay on the perimeter, not go in. And he said, no, I I'm going with my men. Norris did not have to be there. He did not have to die. I see Norris's name and I think all that he missed. You gotta understand, the average age in Vietnam was 19. And out of these 58,000 names, 33,103 were 18 years old. I mean, we were teenagers, 18 years old, 33,000. We got caught in a crossfire, so Marines were being systematically killed and wounded. Alfredo Gonzalez. John Canley. They charged the northern machine gun nest, the NBA machine gun nest, and got close enough to eliminate them with hand grenades. Gonzalez, Canley. Were each the recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor. These two gentlemen saved Alpha Company. But only one of them returned. You welcomed them home. You never forget. That is our job now. To remember. These 58,000 teenagers, basically. Safely rest peaceful sleep. Day is done. How powerful. If you have a chance to go down there over Memorial Day weekend, it is well worth your time. This aired just before Memorial Day weekend, so that was a really good time. Um, I was just going to mention one of the things that we do for um, those who provide us material like this is we will pay to boost the post, and that's something that we can use continuously going forward um, just to get it in people's faces a couple of times. So this is something that Susan Dozier has been working hard on since before hur Hurricane Florence. We were contacted by these um, field and family folks. Um, and they reached out to us, actually. They had seen, I guess, some of our posts, and they were interested in doing a story about other things that are in Jacksonville. It's the official magazine of all North Carolina State Farm Bureau members, and they have about over 500,000 in circulation. And this just, I guess, got in people's mailboxes. Um, so moving forward, we have some free promotion from Visit NC. They are, they are gathering a collection of photos now that we have their photographers and social media folks coming to the area. So they have a good number of photos that inspire them to promote Jacksonville, and this is something that we did not pay for. This is something that we did pay for. This is an Instagram story feature. We provided them some photos, um, and we actually gave them the idea of maybe doing something for Memorial Day as a getaway inspired post. So these are just some of the stories that they put together for us. And some of these photos were taken by Jared Kay, the professional photographer. Some of these are our photos and some of these are just photos that Susan and others have taken. And this was the reach. Susan and Teresa both were really impressed with the reach that we got from this Instagram story. So coming up, we have Scott Mason, who I said was really interested in a couple of 
the stories that we were telling him about. He wants to come back and do more. We have Sturgeon City story, which he did when he was getting to Vietnam. I think that's supposed to air right before the opening of the Environmental Education Center. And he's coming back June 3rd. Remind me what that story is. That is the D-Day. I mean, many people are not aware of the role that Camp Lejeune played in training people for D-Day, in that the Army was the principal force at that time. Thank you, Ron Bassett. And um, so consequently, he's going to talk about the Army was trained here at Camp Lejeune by the Marines because it was still under construction and that, and about the 361 Marines that accompanied the Army in the attack on uh, the D-Day assault on Normandy. Mm -hmm. And we're using uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kim Kimball will be telling that story. Might just mention on that John Legato story, many of you know his background, you know, he's written several books and um, he certainly is something we really appreciate him being willing to tell his story as part of that um, Vietnam um, post there. We have Jared Kay, we're bringing him back for another photo session June 12th and 13th. Susan's hoping to get some writers to come in for the Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center opening. So hopefully she can um, get some folks here. We're going to continue to utilize all the posts and blogs and media that have been pushed out thus far and we expect to get more out of our fan tour. And we hope to present to you some um, total numbers of the reach that we have gained from all of our spring efforts. I will just mention that like that, that tour that we brought in those outdoor riders, um, that cost us, you know, a, it was less than $2,000 in accommodations and things like that and the paying those people to come in. Um, that, that we had to pay for meals and things and uh, matters like that as it was. We did pay what, probably maybe $200, $250 for boost. I mean, we, have, we haven't really yeah, blown that all up that yet. That, we haven't even blown that up yet. So, I mean, look at the reach we have gotten. Our state magazine that we all love, that's $6,700 for a page. You know, and I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful magazine. <laughs> we love it. And, you know, and a lot of people see it, but we don't know how much of a call to action that has on the matter. And, um, you know, so, I mean, you, you know, if you're going to fire that bullet, you better make sure, you know, you got a target for it. And that's, that's kind of where we are. These let us, we cast our lot with several people, and you've seen what we've got back. We get to see that immediately. So we try to go back to those same types of people. And I'll just add to Scott Mason, if you're not familiar with him, the Tar Heel Traveler, he's really, really big in the Raleigh market on WREL. He has his feature runs four nights a week, and people really, really gravitate to that show, they, uh, to his segment. So it's, it's very, very popular, and it's a quick little drive market for us when people are heading to the beach, and so we're hoping that kind of helps us get on the map. Great work. Great report. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Great stuff. I, I have one more comment, too. Uh, for me, my aha moment was with this whole group of writers. Um, the thing that excited them the most about everything they saw in Onslow County, honestly, was Sturgeon City and what the city had done to clean up the river and restore it just lit them up. We had to call Glenn in. He wasn't with us. He was working. And, uh, well, we were working too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was working on other things. When we went to lunch, he was working on other things. And I quickly called Glenn. I'm like, we need some more expertise. You have got to come join us. They were so excited about that story. There is a lot of story to tell. I have said before, um, I feel like our local community is, of course, our number one, and that's our first ambassadors. And to make sure that they're familiar with the assets that we have is our job. And the Memorial Gardens is something I've said, you know, I know a lot of people personally that have not been. They know about it, but they haven't been and walked it themselves and, and felt it. Uh, and Sturgeon City is a story we need to be telling loud and clear. And with the opening, I think, of the Education Center, I think we have a good opportunity for some writers to catch on. And um, Susan and I have had lots of conversation about that and how we are going to be pushing that story. It'll take some time for some visitation to come from that, but we still have to talk about it. It's huge. It's, it's huge for, for what they've done. The story is fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Can you check me up? Yep. I'm up. Okay. Next. 
So just a, a quick recap, we have, um, we're winding down the year. We you funded 11 events last year from the promotional fund, uh, two of which uh, uh, elected not to um, accept the money. They just weren't in a position to uh, hold their event. So of nine events, eight have already uh, happened and are behind us, and we can give a, 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 little, a quick snapshot of the economic impact as a total. I'd like to do that for our next meeting. And our last event that you funded is coming up. It's the Ali Temple Ball, so a charity ball. So that is the last weekend of June. So that will round out your year. Um, <clears throat> so since our last meeting, we've had a couple of events, Sturgeon City being one of them, the Marine Raiders, Mud, Sweat, and Tears, and Jacksonville Jamboree. Paula, do you want to talk about the Earth Day? I think she's going to talk about it during her segment. Oh, well, yeah, I'm going to do it during mine. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Tax on to my normal <laughs> update. <laughs> Paula's going to get with you on that. Susan's going to talk about... Um, the Jamboree and everything they did, and I will just touch on the Marine Raiders Mud, Sweat, and Tears. Their course was um, pretty much destroyed during the uh, hurricane. Um, they worked hard. Military guys got together and worked really, really hard to put it back together. Uh, according to the surveys, they loved the, the, the participants loved the course. It was a little different than last year. It was a little tougher than last year, so they appreciated that. Uh, they had 580 registrations, so that is looking up. The 68% uh, of those, this was the first time they'd ever run the race, so your money that you're spending to get people familiar with the race and get them here is, um, is bringing you some return. 30% of those, of, of all of them, traveled over 100 miles to come, and to date, they tracked about 103 room nights, and the economic um, impact was over $51,000. The whole budget that we funded them was 20 grand for last year, so that's a pretty good return on one race. So we'll include that with our report as well, what the whole series has done, and then overall what the promotional fund has done for immediate, tangible overnight stays. Great, thank you. We do Sir? want to mention that this is Susan, this is someone that works with Susan that's in the red there and his wife and um, we're out there, Nick Barringer, and uh, uh, they, they were among the people out there that we didn't recognize them because they were all covered in mud. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody hey, looks the same at the end of the I didn't race. do it this year. Yeah, so. I, I tapped out. I've done it two years. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. All, all right. right. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for having me to give you an update on Jackson Mills Chambery. Um, we had another great year. I'll just give you some highlights. Um, we had a great lineup of entertainment this year. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a picture, but the Marine Corps Band kicks us off. And boy, did they do just a great job. We're very fortunate when they can come and be a part of the event. They're just not always consistent because they have other obligations. So this year we were able to get them. But we had some great um, headline bands, some jazz, hip pocket, um, the talent show is extremely popular. This is one of the uh, contestants, and she probably had like 10 of the loaves. It was just, they were all over the place. But it draws a good crowd, and it's just really popular. So it was a beautiful day. It was a um, great turnout with vendors. We probably, I want to say, I think we were up to 26 food vendors, and they came from all over and all sorts of food vendors. We did get a survey back. We asked a lot of people, what is it that you like the most? And food so food vendors were the number one thing they enjoyed. Granted, they like all the amusements. Don't get me wrong, that was next. And it was very close in line. But food vendors were uh, the one thing they really enjoyed. But again, the Marine Corps band, that, that gentleman right there, just as hot as it was, he was jumping up and down and, and just having a great time with the crowd. So, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, food vendors were great. Um, we had all of our amusements. We, of course, uh, we couldn't do it without your support and with the city as well, but we're able to provide all those amusements free of charge, the train ride, um, the amusements, the rock climbing wall, petting zoo, all of it, and people truly, truly, truly appreciate it. I cannot tell you how many people we ask how much is it? How much is it? Oh my gosh, it's free, which is nice because it gives them, I think, more money to spend with our vendors, and our vendors love coming to the event. Um, so it's just a really nice, wholesome event for everybody to enjoy. 
And the new parking is. Oh just my fabulous. gosh, I can't tell you how much we appreciate the parking. Um, thanks to Anthony and his team. But the park and ride has been a phenomenal asset at the building for multiple events. But the Jamboree was just an additional one that we were able to utilize um, for handicap parking was tremendous as well as just uh, additional space for our patrons. So we have a car show, we have a softball tournament, and we had the basketball tournament. Basketball goes over two weekends. Um, this is part of the softball. It carried on for two days, two different brackets, but it was, a, it was a good turnout as well. Again, weather was on our side. Basketball, this was the second weekend out of two weekends. The weekend before was 56 teams, and this was about 24 teams. We played in multiple schools, what schools we could play in, I should say, um, but we had a tremendous turnout on that. We purposely split it up because it's a lot to manage. We've learned um, that 80-something teams on one weekend is a, is, uh, is a bit a bit much. But we had a great turnout, great heads and beds, lots of people uh, for that tournament. And again, overall, I can't thank media enough for the fabulous support they give us as far as getting the word out. Teresa does a great job with getting it out as well. So uh, thank you again for your support. We look forward to bigger and better and new stuff next year. Any questions? Any questions? Great work. Thank you. Thank you. Paula? All righty. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm just going to kind of give you guys some brief updates. Of course, I know you'll want to hear about Earth Day. Um, so my uh, got our starting photo here. This is actually from our Friday program, which is our field trip based program. So it's not as a tourism focused event. Um, but as we said, we were lucky this year to have the familiarization to our folks with us on this day and really get to see kids. Um, kids, counting kids, teachers, and chaperones, we had over 700 people out at our site during this Earth Day event. Again, we got gorgeous weather this year for both our Friday and Saturday. It was windy. As you can even see in this picture, we had some issues with some of our canopies, but um, you know, you live and you learn. We made it through, so we were thankful for that. Um, and this is one of our activities. Of course, the kids always love the parachute, you know, who doesn't love that? So, and thank you to the media staff for being out there to help take great, fabulous photos for us um, both days. And I know we had John Outhouse um, also out there on Saturday doing some photos for us. So we appreciate that. Um, so our Earth Day events again, we have Friday, which this was our eighth, I think eighth year that we've run our Friday program. It's been continuing to grow every single year. Um, we put on several of the stations, typically about eight to 10 um, educational activities. And then we also have typically about six to eight other local groups that come out. Our Onslow County beekeepers are featured in this upper photo. Um, and we actually have on the bottom left, that's actually compost information from the master gardeners. They come out for us every year on our Friday. We have the um, cooperative extension come and do an activity typically. And several folks like that, Possum Oat Acres was out with us. Um, and also on our Friday, we had um, Eastern Exotics um, present. You saw, I think, some photos um, from the, the fam tour folks of that. Um, so again, just a lot of different educational stuff for the kids. So they move through it like a festival, essentially, but it's actually they're paying at a field trip rate to come to this event um, as one of our programs. The middle photo on the bottom, we actually have a middle school AVID class um, from Dixon Middle School that comes every year. Um, the teacher brings her group every year and they actually do a station for us. So it's one of their volunteer projects um, and they do a fish print station. So another cool way to get them involved. The older kids putting on a program, you know, an activity for the younger kids and they have a blast with it every year. So um, we continue to work with her. So on Saturday, again, this was our first year. Um, again, thankful so much for the support. Um, working with Teresa was great. Um, different insights, you know, it's always a learning experience and we had some good reactions and interactions on social, um, which was mostly where we focused. Um, some great radio ads um, that were fabulous as well and got a little tag in there about Sturgeon City in general. Um, we estimate about 500 people were out there that day. Um, so we consider that not a bad start, um, you know, for the first year. Um, we had a few food vendors. Um, so just a couple, since we knew we probably weren't going to have too big of a crowd, they want to do well, so you don't want to have too many, um, you know, so that worked out well for us. Um, a couple regular foods and a couple, we had um, Pelican Snowballs and Pop Nana's ice cream, so the kids had some snacks on a hot day. It was, again, great weather. Um, we had a good turnout from our folks that know us, but we were surprisingly happy that we had a lot of folks come out that had heard about the event, um, came later in the day because they heard about it that day or saw their friend shared on Facebook or something like that. So we had a lot of good new foot traffic to our site. 
Um, we had some information that we gave out to folks about us and about the center, um, and we were able to talk about that. So that was definitely good that we got some exposure with some people that weren't familiar with us. Um, and even worked with a couple new vendors, um, you know, that hadn't heard about Surgeon City, but heard there were vendor slots available for the event. So like a different way to kind of reach out in the community too. Um, so we kind of found that to be, <clears throat> excuse me, to be enjoyable. Again, as you guys were out doing things, I think that day with the fam tour too, it was windy. <laughs> so we had to deal with a little bit of that, but all in all, it was great. Um, just a little tag here, the upper right photo is actually the Children's Museum, which um, I'm sure you remember Susan from. They had this fabulous new obstacle course that they come bring out to their events, which I really think was awesome. We had a great space right in the middle of our field that we use in the park. Um, so it really kind of helped fill out our event. So that kind of turned out to be a perfect, a perfect partnership. And we're excited to continue working with them since they're also right downtown and, you know, kind of newer, at least having recently opened the facility. So we're hoping that'll be a good partnership. <clears throat> Just a couple more photos. Um, and again, with the parachute, I think this was actually one that John Outhouse got when he was out there. We just, it, it always proves for a great photo op. Um, and again, we had our microscopes out. We had about six to eight stations out that day that we put out. My staff did a fabulous job uh, throwing some stuff together for the kids. And <clears throat> a lot of folks commented on getting to walk the park and walk the wetlands and just really enjoying the site. So we were excited to hear a lot about that or maybe had heard of us, but never been down there. Um, so again, just really great opportunity to get people out um, and seeing what we do. Of course, I wanted to give you guys an update um, about the center. Um, we are working hard <laughs> to approach substantial completion. As was briefly mentioned earlier, um, we, I have it in my next couple slides. We have set a date for our opening ceremony. Um, we are in the process of getting um, a preferred catering list, um, working with the strategic marketing efforts that you guys have been um, helping us with um, through the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and um, we are getting information from them as we speak, so we can also set up a specific tour of the center for those caterers to come see what we have to offer and how to fit in the space. But a couple of photos here. Um, this is down our nice long lobby. Um, in the center there, there are actually no lights on in this particular um, shot, but I kind of really like showing off this kind of open ceiling um, concept as well. Um, so it's kind of just a neat, a neat view, um, obviously a lot of capabilities and space to add some things and continue to configure things as we go forward. And a couple shots of our room signage. So on our, our full uh, multi-purpose room, we actually have the ability to have three separate rooms. So there, you know, as you can see, there'll be A, B, and C. They're fixing the signage for C, so I didn't take a picture of that one yet. But they each have a name, too, which we find um, particular to Sturgeon City. So they will be the Wilson Bay Room, the Oyster Room, and the Wetlands Room, at least currently. Those are certainly temporary, but um, those were things we picked out, and we got to add these nice little graphics. So they have some nice little meaning to tie in with the Sturgeon City story as well. A couple more photos. Um, upper left, we have this nice covered canopy. So... Um, you drive down the parking to the front entrance, which is your bottom right photo. Um, but at this, kind of the foot of the building, if you were to call it that, which is actually when you first come on the site, um, is where buses will be able to drop off. And so we have this covered walkway. So if it's raining or things like that, students can get right off the bus, go right in the end of the building. Um, it adds kind of a nice feature there. Um, and the center photo in the bottom set there is kind of looking down um, the outside of the brick portion of the building, which is like our pre-function lobby area. They have not yet, I think they're doing it as we speak, um, put up the exterior lettering, but there will be exterior lettering on that portion right by the front entrance um, that will have our Sturgeon City logo, say Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center um, on there. So that will be going up. And then um, a shot of one of the restrooms. Um, just they do look very nice. Um, they're tiled, they're clean. You know, I don't know. Some people like those kinds of things. I thought, I thought that was the wetlands. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see here, um, our opening ceremony will be on Wednesday, June 26th. Um, for those of you that are familiar, that's right in the middle of our Institute week. Um, so we are excited that for this year, we will also be able to hold our opening ceremonies and our graduation ceremonies for the Sturgeon City Institutes in this center as well. But because of that, we'll have a lot of kids running around, so it's going to be a great chance to get to show folks the capabilities of the center and what it's about, although it's also for event rentals that we're focusing on these educational programs. So I think it's a great tie-in to be able to have that program during that week. Hopefully, it won't seem like chaos. <laughs> I'm sure it won't. And um, we're finalizing our rental packet, rules and regs, you know, all the details for folks because we have already been contacted by several people who are interested um, in renting the facility and, and we haven't even actually been pushing it yet. So once we're able to start pushing it, I'm sure we're gonna, we're gonna have our hands full, but that's a good problem to have. Um, of course, um, 
We are going to be set to have the Shriners coming there this fall, so we've been in contact with them and we're working on that for November. Um, a couple more interior shots. Um, again, upper left just kind of shows you a little bit more. This is the open ceiling plan um, in the actual multi-purpose room. This is looking out, like across the site, towards what's currently our admin building. And you can see the hanging lights, um, which in the bottom left photo are also obvious. They're just these nice, simple hanging light fixtures, um, which I, I personally really like. I think those are kind of a cool feature. Um, and just to give you guys an idea, you're looking down towards our wet lab. In the bottom left, those are like kind of sliding barn style doors that you can open and close. Um, so if there were an event, say, in there, you just close that room and nobody really knows what's behind those doors. Um, but when we're teaching in there, upper right is looking into the actual wet lab. So it's got this nice built-in counter and sink for us to do all kinds of science stuff with. Um, and then again in the bottom, again, kind of just showcasing the open floor, open look with the ceiling. Um, and you're looking, you know, you see the ducts and things like that, but it's just kind of a neat, um, a neat look to the facility. And you're looking back at side by side, two different of the folding walls. Um, so those fold up nicely. You can see right into that back wall of the room um, and then are electric and able to come out motorized and when you need them. And um, this is just some information as a reminder. We may have presented some of this before, um, but about what the potential capacities are um, for the facility, looking at different potential layouts. Um, so you guys can see um, each of the single rooms is 45 by 40 feet. Uh, making the full thing 45 by 120. So if you're looking at one room, if you do full room at eight seat rounds, you get about 110. You can go across two rooms, 230, all rooms 450. So that's where we're saying our max capacity um, with your kind of traditional banquet setup, you're looking at about 450 people. Um, and then depending how you lay it out, which combination of rooms you use, um, you can get up to as many as 500 um, if you're looking at more of a standing reception type of situation. So a lot of capacity here. Um, so we're hoping that, you know, obviously there's, I'm sure there's going to be interest and we'll be, uh, we'll be able to help accommodate some of the events that have struggled with space concerns um, in the Jacksonville area. And um, just a little bit about our tourism related efforts. So again, our Earth Day Festival, we said we had about 500 this year, first year. We've already talked. Um, I've been meeting with folks already about some ideas to add on things for next year and be able to grow this. Um, so we're excited for the potential of this event. It will be structured probably pretty differently next year because now we'll have our facility open and be able to utilize that space, that parking lot, that side of the site. So there's going to be some significant changes, but that's a lot of opportunity, we hope. Um, again, the FAM tour was with us on our Friday Earth Day, which was fantastic. Um, as was mentioned, Scott Mason with the Tar Heel Traveler was in that group and he fell in love with Sturgeon City so much so that he squeezed an extra time on his already scheduled trip back to be able to come down to do a feature on us. So he does plan to air that um, during that week leading right up to our opening ceremony. Um, so the story itself focuses on the story of Sturgeon City, not the center specifically, because he wanted to make it kind of timeless so that it could be something we could use and reuse but he'll air it in time and have kind of a piece he can add at the end, you know, mentioning the opening of the center. Um, so it'll hopefully be a good, a good timeline for that. Um, and then of course, as always, we're partnering with the military reunion efforts um, and we've been continually working to look into potential traveling exhibits and other features that we can add in that large lobby pre-function space that I showed you guys to be able to, I mean, there's just all different kinds of opportunities with that space, but then be able to make it usable in different ways. So we don't have a permanent exhibit in there, but we can put in different things and maybe even center events and programs around those different traveling exhibits. Um, and as mentioned, um, planning for our 2020 Earth Day. And one more thing I just want to throw out there too, I think I've mentioned in a couple um, presentations that we're hosting a professional development workshop uh, the 1st and 2nd of July. Um, and we actually just increased to um, 10 registrants in that so far. Um, and we haven't actually really pushed, pushed it yet because of everything with the building. We're kind of waiting to push that out. Um, and actually over half of those registrants are from outside of Onslow County at this point in time. So we're hoping that will continue to grow. Again, that's our first push with this this year, but we're hoping that's an area we can continue to add on with the new center as well. And that is it for me. Thank you. Any Very questions? Important. Thank you. Well, we're excited. You know, many of us are waiting. And so Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so we'll be putting out the more official information about the opening ceremony soon, but um, it is it is coming, so we're excited too. And we appreciate all the support that you guys have provided for us and continue to provide, so thank you very much. Scott? 
Yes, sir. I was told that May 30th was dressed like Alan Weeks Day. Um, <laughs> so, I was the only one that got that memo. We look like twins today. Sure. Um, so, since our last meeting, well, first, let me, this is Ty Talbot. He's our intern from UNCW. He wanted to uh, meet some Welcome. brilliant minds, so I brought him here. Um, so, since our last meeting, uh, Maurice and I attended our National Association of Sports Commissions uh, meeting that we attend every year. Uh, this is not only educational sessions, but this is where we can meet with some of the folks that have events out there for bid. Um, so gather some good information and, and talk to uh, some good folks there that we can continue conversations with into the future. To, to recap a couple of events, uh, as you know, our Hall of Fame event was May 2nd. Uh, everything went really well. It was uh, one of the best attended Hall of Fames ever, thanks to Glenn and Colonel Kopka and Jim Sheehan and those guys. And, we did really well uh, financially with that event, which is great. We know it's a little bit of an anomaly because of, of some of those folks that were inducted this year, but uh, great things to, to build on. And uh, uh, Mr. Hagan had some kind remarks at our board meeting about the event, so I think everybody had a, a really good time there. And then, as you know, we took over the Beat the Bridge race this year. Uh, December 5 Fund was going to you know, let that um, go defunct because of some folks moving. So. You know, a little nervous about taking over an existing event, but we actually had 479 folks registered. Whoops, sorry, Glenn. Um, which is the largest in the history of the race. So we were really excited about that. Uh, about 68 room nights, a little over 12,288 economic impact. Probably a little more than that. In actuality, there was quite a few folks that were kind of what I'll call day trippers, and they probably grabbed lunch or filled up the gas tank or did something while they were here. So that was a that was a great event for us. Really, one of the neat things was the Facebook event page. The reach for that event was over thirty eight thousand that we're seeing about this event and about Jacksonville, and you know that's one of the largest uh, that we've had as far as that. And I think we have a quick video to show you uh, of the event. photographs were taken by Donna, so Ooh. photo credits. <laughs> uh, we had over 100 volunteers. It was just, it was a great event. So uh, our, some of our surveying from that event, uh, asking them, you know, one of the questions is how they found out about the event. And uh, a lot of the responses has been because of the race series. So we're seeing some good traction from that. Hopefully that continues over to Running With The Law, which is the next race in the series for, for Susan and her crew. Uh, but we've seen the numbers on them. Almost all the races are up this year. And we hope that that's a small part of that as promoting this whole thing as a series. And then coming up for us, uh, next up is our third annual Marine Chevy Freedom Fight, our boxing. It was at Jacksonville High School last year with the gym still in question there. We're at Northside this year. So that's on June 21st. Uh, and then, you know, of course, ECI is back at the end of June. I was on the phone with Wells. Just the other day, everything is on track for that and ready to go. We're actually going to have more room nights this year. Uh, it's going to be about 390 room nights for that event, uh, just because of some of the different teams that are coming in this year. And then we've partnered with the County Parks and Recs to assist them with a car and motorcycle show in July. That'll be at Onslow Pines Park. And then leading into August, of course, is the annual football jamboree. So that's what's coming up for us. But uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I, I'm just, I really feel like we've got some great momentum going right now. And 
really excited about the future and a lot of our upcoming events. Thank you, Scott. Any questions? He continues to do a great job. And it just reminds me of the last 50 years when everybody would say, there's nothing to do here. <laughs> <laughs> great work, Scott. Thank you. Thank Donna? You. Well, I, this, I think this was kind of tossed together this morning. I sent Mr. Glenn some pictures because I wasn't sure that I was going to be in the office today and Lorette was like, tag, you're it. You get to go to the meeting today. But um, as just as the Jacksonville TDA has been doing, it has been Travel Rider Palooza for Onzo County Tourism. And I have hosted three groups, one family travel rider and her family. I hosted a group of four. And then most recently was Elizabeth Hudson with Our State Magazine. And we have a few pictures here that I shared. Um, I did want to mention I sh did a hundred dollar boost for to North Carolina and ge geared it towards, um, I guess, post engagement. And I had almost over 600 clicks on the video that watched about the Vietnam Memorial. So I thought that was pretty awesome. And I don't even know, I don't remember the numbers of how many people looked at, but I mean, it was in double digits for the thousands. So it was just, that was a great piece. And happy that he was excited and again he was excited seemed to be excited about everything in Onslow <laughs> County so but anyway these are some pictures of Elizabeth Hudson's visit just with some of the people that she was with and Mr. Glenn could have left that one out because that was not a good angle <laughs> but she brought her she came and I at, told her that she could invite a guest whether it be a friend relative significant other or mom and she chose mom and pretty much whatever mom says kind of validates whatever Elizabeth is thinking for what goes in our state magazine I learned but this is their trip aboard <laughs> the sunset I met aboard the bayonet I took that picture of Mr. Glenn I invited him along and might I say you kept getting brought up during the conversation during her stay as being so knowledgeable and having so much information we should have had a tape recorder going um and this is her trip at you our visit to yana's in downtown swansboro and that's her mom miss susie it almost felt like aunt susie and cousin elizabeth were visiting they were the most hospitable and so warm they were just such warm individuals i really enjoyed showing them around and there they are oh, um Walton's Distillery having a sampling of the shine. Mom liked the hard stuff. She didn't like the fruity stuff with the flavoring. <laughs> she wanted it straight out. They're my second trout group of travel riders. That when the um, bourbon goes online, I'm going to send them a bottle. So they really like that. Don Walton was there and gave them a sampling of that as well. This is their trip aboard going out shrimping aboard the real fun fishing real fun, real living fishing charters out of Sneeds Ferry. We didn't have a whole lot of um, shrimp that come in because it is the beginning of the season, but at least she was able to experience and how it's done here in Eastern North Carolina and actually kind of live the life of the fisherman. And she said one takeaway that she's going to take out of that when she goes to the grocery store and reaches for that bag of shrimp that's $19.99, she won't think twice about it anymore <laughs> because they work very hard for it. Um, well, there she is with Mr. Dawn. Um, there she is with, I'm trying to remember what kind of fish that was. It had teeth. It got caught up in the net. But anyway, she wanted her picture taken with it. You find them usually under the pylons. Yeah, and then that's her with the dad. But I mean, she's just such a great, great soul, and she had fun talking with everyone. That's her on her shelling experience, and you know the theme for Visit NC is still kind of they're piggybacking on their um, first that happened in North Carolina, and as many beaches that she has visited in North Carolina, that is the first time she has ever found a whole sand dollar. So she was more excited over that sand dollar, I think, than pretty much anything else. <laughs> she did. She found ten of them because I took her out and I had to show her what to look for. She's like, "How do you see them?" So anyway, she found them, and I feel well sure there'll be an editorial coming out on her sand dollar find. Um, and that's her and mom out at Bear Island. They, we took them out shelling out there, and mom found a couple of really nice welts. And that's her in, they call it the um, anniversary suite at Mike's Farm, the little, the outhouse that they have for special occasions that folks reserve. And that's just her with the owners of the Borough Cafe, downtown Swansboro. 
and then her with Mr. Glenn and Miss Misty Lee. They had worked together and she had edited Misty's work for years and they had never physically met. So this was a good encounter. Misty gave some great writings, which I was, she shared with me and I read and I'm like, hmm, so I may be giving Miss Misty a call to kind of help me with some of my website writing. She does an amazing job. Um, and this is just some more when they were doing their visit out to the gardens. Under the docent with the most, just as I say, Mr. Glenn, he always gets a good tour. Anyway, that's kind of it. Just lots of press trips. I attended my second year for marketing college down in Delonica, Georgia. Learned lots of new and fun things. So I'm excited about implementing in that, them in my program of work for the upcoming fiscal year. I am still waiting to see what I get allocated by the county, so mine's a little different than y'all set up, so I don't have a whole lot of news to share on that until I find out that news. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Any questions? Thank you for the updates. They were all very well well done, so thank you very much. Lot, lots going on, as, as Vice Chairman indicated. There's, there's a lot to do. And, uh, all you got to do is look for what you like, and I'm sure you will find it, whether it's sports or water sports or tours or birding or kayak tours or car shows, sports. And I think one of the things going after that urge media is one of the best ways that we can spend our money and be fiscally fiscally responsible because those earned media dollars i mean it carries on for years i mean i mean you get results for years after their visits and that's just the things they share because obviously they can't tell it all at one time so i know that that'll be a, another big focus for our upcoming year as well thank you donna all right, um, next order of business is going to be a item 13 budget amendment, which you have in your packet. Basically, the amendment is to increase the occupancy tax for FY19, and it's on page uh, 29. Would you like to um, comment? As you said, it's just to increase the occupancy tax, and we wanted to be sure that we had enough money to um, pay the administrative fee. Because we're coming up on the year end and we need to okay. not exceed our budgets. Oh, you want your budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's not enough. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. You make sure to sit through these meetings. <laughs> Can I get a motion, please? Yes. Yeah. Oh. I, I second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Item number 14 is uh, the appointment of the audit firm. Uh, as you know, that we historically um, use the same audit firm that the city uses. And um, this year we put it, I guess it was our turn to put it out for bid. Um, the bids came in and uh, Cherry, is it Becker? Cherry Becker, yes. Becker LLP was selected um, by the uh, city council as the auditor for the city and um, we will need the authority to approve the same firm to do um, our audit and the amount is listed in your packet of $4,500. Is that accurate? Yes sir and that's the same amount that the right. authority has paid before so no change in the amount. It's a different firm? Yes, mm -hmm. after 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I can, I'll make <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> well, actually, that's good. You know, I, I, think it is I don't. Too. I'm not a fan of using the same. I could tell you lots of stories. I mean, even at the league, they had the same investment group for 15 years, 20 years. We changed firms, and we've almost tripled our money. <clears throat> so, I second this motion. I'm sorry. It's okay. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, um, item number 15, tax collections. This is so easy. It's up. It's <laughs> <laughs> this is such pleasure to tell you these things. I mean, we know we're on a ride here, and um, Rick was talking about some things that had happened to his facility there, and um, so too, Chris. I mean, it's, it's, it's just... Phenomenal. That's orange is FY18. Current year is the blue. I mean, it's amazing. This is now the highest we've ever had because the blue was the previous high that um, 
had, um, had, had been existed, and now we're way over that as it was there. This is what your collections are to date, as you just said, we're, we're going to probably blow that number out again here by the end or so there. So. Just make sure you note that it was under my... <laughs> I'm going to nickname you Florence. Florence. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be tied out? <laughs> hey, over here. Over here. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's, that's, that's the deal there, sir. So thank you, Glenn. Great work. Great work. I think a lot of it is attributed to our work. Well, well you know, if we In combination of, while people are here, remember, our goal has always been uh, that when people visit, not only do we want to attract new visitors to our community, but the, the visitors that do come to our community to visit their loved ones and family, that we find a way to keep them here a few extra days. Absolutely. And uh, and that, in turn, equals um, heads on beds, and that's our goal. So I do want to call attention that the orange, while it was 18, what you're seeing with 19, before September, it still was higher, which over the previous year. We think some of these effects are having some significant, you know, run. We well, know what I, happened in September and October. So I'm the thing that I'm very pleased with is, is the fact that we're we're being very current with our approach. We're being very current with our marketing, with the changes. I mean, Teresa and I go way back when you know a full page ad in the Daily News was you know you were a hero. You know, I mean, those days are gone. You have to approach marketing in a, in a whole different way, and, and, and we're doing that. And, and so I think uh, I think we're receiving some of the benefits of that indirectly, you know, along with the other events that have taken place. So I think as long as we keep on that track and we keep doing these things, I think we're going to continuously go up, you know, and that's our goal. So well, we want to give the thanks to you folks because without you backing us up to do this strategic planning those wouldn't have happened because we were kind of doing, you know, those other activities as it is and these strategic plans we think are truly driving new efforts. Thank you. Um, any comments, directors? Anything? I know we've kept you here a long time. I apologize. We had a lot to go through. Have to hear um, mm -hmm. Item 18 is, um, is uh, meeting days. Is that accurate? Uh, Absolutely. Meeting I just schedule, did wonder. which we we talked about last time. Yes, sir. That's that. That's where you are there. If I could just make one quick one city moment there, while we've yes. had several of them, we actually were going to use Scott Mason's for the one city, and it got usurped. But uh, you know, yesterday we got to participate in a birthday celebration that Chris brought to us. So uh, we just wanted to say that thank you for that, and. Um, he also brought all his selfie items. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a lot of consumption of high sugar items yeah, yesterday. <laughs> I think fewer people ate their um, dinner last night in full. full deal on that Thank night. you, Greg. All right, if we have no further business, I'll entertain a motion to Thank you for being here today. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.